Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to display the decade that a date falls in using Microsoft Access. For example, you got a date, like a date of birth, right? I'm going to show you how to display what decade it falls in, like the 1980s. This is from a conversation that came up in the Access Forum on my website. One of my moderators, Scott, came up and said that uh, he had to recently figure out decades in which a date fell. He had to do some demographics. And we're going to talk about Scott's solution in a little bit. But I'm going to first show you the way that I would handle this, and then we'll take a look at what Scott did. Before we get started, there are a couple things you should know first. The first one is calculated fields, how to make calculated fields in a query. The second thing is the year function. If you don't know how to use the year function, go watch this video. And the third thing is concatenation, taking two or more fields and slapping them together to make one field out of them. So we can make like 19 AD and put the S on the end. That's concatenation. These are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. If you don't know this stuff, go watch this stuff now and then come on back. You'll find links you can click on in the description down below the video. Okay, so here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to. And in here, I got a customer table that just happens to have a whole column full of customer sense fields in here. We'll pretend this is the date we want to use for our date of birth or whatever date. Doesn't matter. So I want to say that this one here, for example, falls in the 19 ADs. How do we do that? Well, let's go do some query magic. Create, query design. Now, when I'm figuring out how to do something for the first time, I tend to break it up into multiple steps, right? When you're, when you're finished writing, you can, you can put it all together if you want. I'll show you how to put it all in, in, into one step later. But it's easiest for your brain to, to figure this stuff out, especially when you're learning it for the first time, if I do each individual step, right? So the first thing, let's bring in our customer table and close this guy. And let's just bring in the field that we care about right now, which is my customer sense field. And we're going to pretend that's my date. We'll call it D. So I'm going to come out here and put a D colon in front of that. That's just renaming customer sense to D. And if I run this now, you'll see it's just called D. See? Makes it easier in your formulas, too. Okay. So I don't care about the whole date. All I care about is the year part of it, right? So I'm going to make another field over here called Y colon. And that's going to be the year function, the year of D. Just like that. I'll zoom in so you can see it. Shift F2. There you go. So Y is now the year that D falls in. Okay. And if I run it, there's my year. There's the year that that date falls in 1990, for example. Okay. All right. You follow me? See one step at a time. Then we'll break it down. Now, what's the next thing I have to do? Well, basically I want to chop off that rightmost digit, right? I want to chop off the, the single year digit. So for this one, for example, I want to chop off the seven, right? That'll be in the 1980s. This one I want to chop off the five. So I basically want to divide it by 10, basically. Let's try that first. All right, let's make another value over here. Let's call this one, I don't know, let's call it X, okay? And this is going to be Y divided by 10. All right, I'll zoom in so you can see that one. All right, X is Y divided by 10. Now, if I run this, I get fractional components. I get decimal values. That's not quite what I want. I just want to chop that off. I don't want to deal with it. There's a special thing. I mean, you could, you could round that number if you want to, but there's an even easier way. It's called integer division. All right? The forward slash like that gives you actual division, where you get a remainder or a fractional component. If you use a backslash, that's integer division. Okay? I cover that in Access Expert Level 8. Access Expert Level 8's got a whole bunch of cool math stuff in it, bankers rounding, uh, you know, regular rounding, all kinds of cool stuff. So check this out if you want to learn more. But now with that integer division, if I run it now, look at that. I get a nice clean number that represents the thousands, hundreds, and tenths place. Okay. So now all I got to do is multiply that by 10. All right. So let's come over here. Let's make another field. Oh, oh come here. Get over there. All right. Let's make this one Z is now X times 10. And if I run that, there's your nice even decade value. And if you need a numeric value, you can use that. Okay, if you, if you need it for any kind of calculations, like Scott said, he's doing demographics. I got another video on demographics coming out very shortly. You're gonna enjoy that one too, where you can actually say, okay, I wanna break up groups 
you know, people who are 18 to 25, 26 to 45, that kind of stuff. That'll be probably next, probably tomorrow. But anyways, so there's a numeric value if you want that. If you want it to have the little S on the end of it, just use concatenation. Come over here and say, we'll call this one decade. My final result, decade, is Z ampersand S, just like that. I'll zoom in, right? Take my Z value that I just got and add on to it with string concatenation and S. Now, when you do this, this becomes a text string. So you can no longer use it in math problems, but... There's your decade. And you can see how that lines up on the left side of the column, of the field, right? Whereas these are all right aligned, that's important. These are numeric values, that's a string value. But if you want to display that, hey, this person's, you know, from the 1980s, there's your value. And if you want to put this all together in one step so you don't have four different columns here, I like the multiple steps of myself. I tend to leave that around. But if you don't, you could just say decade is going to be, I'll zoom in so you can see better. Decade is going to be, open parentheses, the year of, the, in this case, we're going to say D, but it's customer sense, doesn't matter. You can get rid of the D colon too if you want to. We'll just put customer sense in here. Okay, and then we're going to take that and do our integer division and then multiply by 10. And then on that, we're going to add the S. All right, so hit okay. And we can actually get rid of this now. And there's one field that covers the whole thing. There you go. But, I mean, if someone looking at this isn't going to, I mean, that's not as easy to read as my five columns. But whatever works for you. Doesn't matter. Access don't care. It's going to get the job done either way. Now, let's take a look at how Scott did it. Scott did it a slightly different way, but it still works. This is perfectly fine. I used integer division. He used the opposite function. He used modulus. Modulus says, instead of where integer division divides it and chops off the remainder, modulus gives you the remainder. So what he said is, okay, I got 1945 here. The modulus gives me the 5, right? Then the decade start, I just subtract that value. And then here he's got the previous decade too. All right, so he, did the, he basically did the same thing I did just in the opposite direction. And then I added the S on. But this is perfectly valid just as well. All right, good job, Scott. And then Adam mentioned something. You do the same thing with century and millennia. Yeah, you could, but then you're not using regular access dates because an actual access date only goes back to 1899. So your centuries-wise, you'll be limited to 19th, 20th, 21st. But yes, the same technique if you wanted to would work fine. If let's say you've got your year stored in a, a long integer field, like I covered in my uh, my video on how to do BCE dates, right? You could put any year value that you want in there like 1450, and then you can calculate the century using the same technique. So no, I'm not going to do a separate century video, but there you go. <laughs> so that's it. That's how you calculate the decade a date falls in in Microsoft Access, thanks to Scott and Adam and everybody else who contributed to this. Somebody asked me about this months ago, too, and I put it on my list, and the list is so long, guys. I got a huge list. And I, I get to what I can when I can. And when I start seeing the same question pop up two or three times, then I'm like, oh, wait, someone asked me that two weeks ago. And then I find it. And yeah, OK. So it's, it's the squeaky wheel gets the grease. The more that's, that people ask me the same thing, the, the more likely I am to make that video. But anyways, there's your fast tip for today. I'm Richard Ross. I hope you learned something. And I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more.
Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my Tech Help videos, plus my Code Vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any Tech Help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for Tech Help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1, and it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.